Hey everyone, the question is, will Gen Z save comic book shops? I don't know. I've got a theory. It might be a little outlandish. There is some evidence to, I guess, support it. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. First, I want to show you this is updates. Downcast is still up. Uh, we've got, what, three days left. This campaign is going to come to a close really, really soon. Uh, but the good news, this has already been really, really successful. If you haven't backed it, please do. But uh, I'm already just going to show you some character sketches that the artist Ignacio Lazaro did. Uh, these are for three of the characters that are, uh, you know, they're lesser characters, but they're still important. Actually, this is a, a bad guy. Um, these are both bad guys, actually. Uh, but yeah, they're they're important to the story, and we're making progress already. Campaign's not over, but we are underway. We are making this book to make sure we can get it into your hands. All right, I stumbled across this today. This was on uh, Bloomberg Business Week, and... Um, this is interesting because I think it can apply to comic book shops because I think there are some pretty big similarities in patterns. Um, so this this reminds me, okay, well, so for, first off, millennials tried to kill the American mall, but Gen Z might save it. Turns out that Generation Z, this these would be teenagers and also uh, younger college age students. They're just getting into college now. They are actually a more conservative generation. They're, they have a, a lot of really interesting things about their generation in general. One of those things is that they like to go to the mall, uh, which had been something that people didn't think was going to happen. Uh, so this reminds me, uh, when I was in high school, I took a music theory class. This was back in, I think, 2003. And I remember that there was... A guy in my class that was pretty into like screamo music and he had a theory that the way that things were going to go is that music would continue to get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier until pretty soon it would be unrecognizable uh, because it's so heavy people just wanted heavier music uh, now if you listen to music today flashback to the present uh, flash forward to the present you'll know that that's not true actually while you know some heavy music exists uh it's not like the general populace is listening to really heavy music right now uh, in fact a lot of that music has fallen out of style so that's the keyword here style uh trends happen things change it's not like there's some natural progression to one end and you'll see that with politics you'll see that with a lot of things there's a swinging pendulum and a lot of this uh, you know it's the same with fashion and style uh, it will change it will sometimes move back on things that you've already seen but it's not just going to follow one progression so when people think that it's inevitable that there won't be any local stores there won't be any mall for example um, that might not be true just because there's the ability to buy things online does not mean that culturally people will prefer to buy things online all the time. Now, I'm not going to draw any any conclusions right now. I'm just saying that this could be maybe possibly some evidence that local comic shops might actually have a turnaround. Um, and it's just based off of a few articles, and this is the main one. All right, so Gen Z keeps confounding corporate America. They've shunned beer. They want companies to take political stands. So they're the ones responsible, huh? And they trust Kardashians uh, to make their makeup choices. This is, again, social media influencers, uh, which is interesting because Comicsgate is kind of, if you think about it, this is how things have grown. So, yeah, this is, is really interesting. Gen Z, I think there's a market. But perhaps the biggest surprise about this new co cohort of teenagers is the most unexpected of all. They love the shopping mall. My question is why they say around 95% of them visit a physical shopping center in a three month period in 2018, as opposed to just 75% of millennials and 58% of gen X, according to an international council of shopping center study. See, this is interesting because this is not like the government doing a study on it. Cause why would they care? Uh, this is private enterprise trying to figure out their next generation of customers. And so they're doing these studies and learning these these things. I would not have thought that that, that would be a thing, uh, shopping at the mall, but apparently it is. Uh, it continues, and they genuinely like it. Three quarters of them said going to a brick and mortar store was a better experience than online. Man, 
can you believe that? I I hate I hate going to the mall. I hate going shopping, you know, around Christmas time especially in person. I really enjoy just buying things on online. It's uh, quite nice. Now, I'm not going to say that they don't buy stuff online. Obviously, they do, but they're having an enjoyable experience going somewhere to buy something that is interesting. And if they really like it, they're going to carry it. Um, once they get into that prized demographic age um, and they control a lot, a big percentage of the spending power, you're going to see more uh, corporations tailoring things to them because they're going to decide what happens. Okay, here we go. There's always been this assumption that as you go through the age spectrum, the younger con- uh, the younger consumer that has grown up with the online and digital is very savvy, uh, would shun physical experiences, oh, and is very savvy, would shun physical experiences. That's what you'd think, right? Again, this is a theory that music is just going to continue down this one trend line. Uh, it's not the truth. That's not how things work. It's just like a fashion. Uh, they will change and people have different preferences. Maybe because it's what they're missing, there's something enjoyable about it. Okay, he continues, that's, but that actually is not uh, the case. Gen Z, or the group of kids, teens, and young adults, roughly between the ages of 7 and 22, still appreciate brick and mortar. But they aren't just millennials living in a different time. Today's teens interact differently with stores than their older siblings and Gen X parents before them, and several retailers who didn't understand the fundamental differences in how they shop landed themselves in bankruptcy court. Uh, okay, that's really specific. Okay, and so we have a graph here, a bar bar graph. Is this like a sideways stacked bar graph? I'm not a stats guy, but it looks uh, like a graph to me. So physical stores is in black. This is their preference. Uh, sh- uh, share of 13 to 19 year old survey respondents by where they prefer to make purchases physical stores by far is the majority in all of these sections but you'll notice food and beverage is is up there that would be that's less so online maybe this is why uber eats is having such a hard time making money uh people prefer to do it in person personal care products apparel electronics novelty items uh maybe like comics this is definitely farther down the list, and that might be because to get novelty items, you'd have to specific find something really specific, and online is just a better environment for that because there's not much in person. But what this shows me is there are still more people who prefer more Gen Z uh, survey respondents who prefer an in-store experience. Could this turn things around for comic shops? I, I don't know. Uh, you know, we're just exploring we're just speculating right now. All right. I'm going to skip down the article a little bit, but you can kind of see malls are adapting, trying to make things fun, uh, for these Gen Z people. I almost wonder like arcades. I've always thought it'd be cool to own an arcade. Um, but just business wise, I don't know if it really makes a lot of sense, but maybe Gen Gen Z could bring back arcades too. This could be really great, really fun generation. If they can bring all this stuff back. Okay, so they go on to explain that there's not the same, uh, let's see, you don't, you just don't have the same predictability that you have in some of the department store square footage. Uh, yeah, so they, uh, let's see, you can always show up and find something different. Yeah, they show up and see stuff and there's something fun about buying something that you haven't planned out every square inch of it ahead of time like you would online. You know, you, there's the tendency to compare things. This could be great for a comic shop because if they go into a bookstore and they're looking around, to me, that means they're more likely to pick something that they didn't come in there for because that's part of the fun. That's the experience. Okay, more specifics. They let them customize it. Um, let's see. They don't think secondhand clothing clothing is second rate. Um, okay, interesting. I'm not sure how I could even make <laughs> make that apply to comics if I tried to. Uh, so basically, that's the end. This is a finding. I mean, there's a few other articles that are on the same topic. This is just the one I decided to go with. Uh, but I'd like to know what your comments are. Is there hope in Gen Z and comic book shops? What would you need to do in order to get Gen Z to read comics? How can you gear comics toward them and get them into this amazing medium? I'd love to know. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to get to Back Downcast. It's on Indiegogo right now, and we're running out of time. We're so close to $23,000. That would be amazing. A couple more backers would get us there. Thank you very much. I will talk to you next time.